Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. I'm finally back, finally back in Cape Town. It's been a roller coaster over the past two months. I have been preparing for my final exams ever for university. I went to New York, then I went to Poland. So there's just been a lot, a lot happening at the moment. But finally done with university, I found out that I passed all of my subjects, so I have passed university, finished everything I needed to, and I'm so excited to get back into creating videos again and just create for you guys. I've been missing it so much, but I just haven't had the time. So the other day I was thinking this could be a really cool idea, and I literally just posted an Instagram story like 10 minutes ago asking you guys to send in your raw photos for me to edit. I thought this could be something interesting where I give you guys feedback on your photos and you get to be featured on my channel. So it's kind of a collaborative effort, and I think it could make for a really interesting video just to see some other perspectives on creativity. But in saying that, I'm gonna get into this video. I've already received probably about six or seven emails in like 10 minutes. Um, so I'm gonna get started. I probably will be making more of these if the demand for them is there and you guys like this video as well. Um, but without further ado, let me get into this thing. Woo, claps all around for back at videos again. Can any of you do that? I don't know. <laughs> Alright, let's do some editing. Alright, so jumping straight into Lightroom, I'm starting out with just a select few people. Like I said, I've got in loads of emails already and I'm sure they are going to keep coming in as well. So I'll make more episodes of this, but as of right now, I'm going to start with a few people, get into how I would edit these photos. Obviously, it's going to be different from how these creators edit it, but hopefully you can see how I do things. And hopefully that helps you guys out as well. So usually when I edit my photos, I generally start off by using my presets on the left over here. These are kind of an adaption from the preset pack that I'm selling. So these have kind of just evolved and I think I'll be selling these in January again. So just keep an eye out for that, my updated presets with my new look and feel that I've been using more recently on my Instagram feed. So go check my Instagram out if you haven't seen that already. It is at Visual Rev. But without further ado, once again, I'm taking way too long to get into this video. Since we have so many portrait shots, I think I'm going to start off with this beautiful landscape picture. This is in South Africa, the Blader River Canyon. I'm yet to go there. I feel like I should probably go there sometime soon because it is absolutely incredible. Anyway, getting on to the edit. As I was saying, what I usually do is apply one of my presets straight away. For the series, we're going to edit it from the base. I really love the travel aesthetic to this one. Obviously just a landscape shot, some beautiful colors we see in the photo. So I'm going to go through here and try and give it that film-like feel, a bit of nostalgia and the travel road trip vibes that we like to see. Starting off, first things first, I'm going to go down to the tone curve and just give it a really cool, nice basic S curve just to bring up those highlights and pop the shadows down a little bit. Give it a little bit of fade on the tail end here, just bringing that up. And then I'm going to come to the basics, bring down the highlights, bring up the shadows just to see some more of that detail. The shadows are quite faded at the moment, so what I'm going to do to compensate for that is bring down the blacks quite a bit. Um, I'm going to bring up the exposure just a bit as well, and maybe even the contrast. This picture was just very grey and faded out if we looked at the before and after already. You can see how grey that was. Moving forward, I think I'm going to bring the saturation down just a little bit maybe to around minus 15. I personally like bringing saturation down in my photos. But other than that, I don't think there's much more we need to do on the basic settings. We could revisit this a bit later in the process. Maybe I'll turn the temperature up just a little bit to give it some warmth. Eh, not too much. That looks good over there. So now if we move down, going to, I'm gonna make these greens into more of a yellowish color as well as the yellows into the orangey color just because if you know South Africa, you know, our landscapes, they are very orange and blue strong. So I'm gonna try and emphasize that through the edits as well. One thing I like to do in my photos as well is bring down the saturation of the blues. That looks good to me, maybe even the luminous just a bit. And then lastly, I'm gonna bring up these oranges just to compensate, otherwise the whole photo looks a bit too desaturated. So just before I go on further, one thing that I would have done with this photo differently when shooting it I, I don't know if this is possible, but maybe going around the peak to the left so you get the whole peak in the sunlight because we have quite a large shadow covering the peak, which is the central focus of the image. You could also try just going there at a different time of day. I don't know what your travel arrangements are, but if you do have time to shoot something, make sure that you shoot it in the best light possible so that your image is 
cast in the light and you're able to see all the details of the focal point. So that's one thing I would have changed when shooting this. I know you might not have had the opportunity to, but just look out for that in the future if you are going to shoot specific things. Going, I probably have to move through this a bit quicker just so we get through the whole video, but I'm gonna put some blues in the highlights of the split tone, put some browns in the shadows, and there we're starting to get that faded travel feel to it. It's gonna come down to the detail, just bring up the sharpening a little bit, not too much, lens corrections, I don't know what this was shot with. Canon 18 to 55, nice. So just applying that enable profile corrections to get rid of that vignetting. And then lastly, I'm gonna bring up the grain. I personally love grain and I use it quite a bit in my photos. So I'm gonna bring that up, bring up the size, just to give it some texture to the photograph and bring in some of that nostalgic feels. Other than that, the only thing more I would do is come over to the graduated filter on the right over here and just bring it up on the left and the right. These peaks over here on the bottom corners are brighter than the center points, the focus of the image, so it draws quite a lot of attention away from that. So I'm just drawing these graduated filters over that and then bringing down the highlights as well as the exposure just a bit so our focus stays on the central points of the image. Just that gave me one idea now, something we could do is drag a radial filter, which is the circular one, over the middle over here, just like that. And then what I'm gonna do is bring up the shadows, bring down the blacks maybe, just to give it some contrast, bring up the highlights, and maybe even just the exposure a little bit. We don't wanna make it too much, otherwise it's gonna look very obvious that we brightened up the middle. But this subtle change can make quite a big difference to the image if we flick on the before and after. So that is that, I think I'm done with this photo. If we look at the before and after, we can see that the first one was quite gray and washed out. We brought it to life, given it a lot of brown tones, a lot of grain, a lot of texture, giving that nostalgic feel. And I know that it is quite brown, but if you've seen South Africa in real life, if you've seen our landscapes, I think you could agree that these are definitely the colors that we see when driving through the country. So I'm gonna move on to the next one. This video is getting on quite a bit. I didn't expect to spend so much time on each photo. I think for the future, I'll be a bit more concise and quick with them, but this is the first episode, so we're playing around. We'll see what happens. Also, I'm gonna put people's usernames of the photos below the image, so go check them out on Instagram. Thank you so much for submitting your photos. If you would like to submit your own photos as well, make sure to send them to thevisualreviews at gmail.com. And if you can, try and send it in raw because that will be a lot easier to edit for me, but if JPEG is all you have, then that's good with me. Moving on to the next image. I don't think I'm gonna get through all of these images in this video today, but it's learning for the future. We're getting there. Moving on to the next image, I think I'm gonna speed through this real quick, giving it a more modern feel and adding some tones in the tone curve. Let's start off with the tone curve once again. I'm gonna make some slight adjustments to this, bring up shadows, bring down highlights. Not too much because we are gonna be editing the RGB tone curves as well. I'm gonna start off with the green. I kind of wanna have a greenish blue feel in the shadows, so I'm gonna drop a point in the middle over there. Hopefully that doesn't move. And just bringing up the bottom end of the green tone curve, we can see that it's starting to add some greens in the shadows. Then I'm gonna to go to the blue, drop a point in the middle once again, and then bring up the blue tail end, and we can see that it's giving that greenish blue tint in the shadows. I'm gonna be all over with this one, but next I'm gonna to go to the greens. I want to desaturate these greens quite a bit, also bringing down the luminance. That is good over there. Yeah, maybe, yeah, that looks good to me. I'm gonna go with that. And then the blues, I'm also gonna bring down these blues over here. I really wanna go for that greenish blue tint feel, but not have the actual colors of green and blue in the image, if that even makes sense. The image is still quite flat, so I'm gonna just spruce it up a bit in the basic settings over here. Just bringing up the shadows, bringing these blacks down to keep the contrast. I wanna bring up the highlight, I mean the whites as well. Um, just take down the highlights a little bit, not too much. Bring up the whites and already we can see if we put the side by side, there's quite a big difference to the image. I'm gonna fade these blacks just a little bit as well. So all I'm gonna do is drop a point on the bottom end of the tone curve and then bring up the tail just to fade it out ever so slightly. That looks good. Um, and what more we can do to the image is add some highlights of light blue, not have it too much. And then the shadows, I wanna go for that greenish blue feel. Again, not too much, keep it in like the really, really low level of like three. That looks good. Yeah, it's looking good so far. I don't, there's not even that much more we need to do to the photo. So you can see how it's pretty easy to get a whole lot of different looks if you know the right tools to use 
and where to find them. Um, but hopefully this video helps you guys get the looks that you want. But if you have any questions as well, just leave it down in the comments below and I'll try out those styles in the next videos too. Do I want grain for this one? Maybe, maybe just a little bit, just so it doesn't look too sharp and digital. But as of right now, that looks good to me. I'm gonna move on to the next image. I wanna do at least four in each episode, just so we can give each person a chance. I feel like this video is very rushed. Let me know what you guys think of the structure of this video. How should I go about it in the future? Do you like me just rushing through lots of images, or should I focus on maybe two images, or three, or four, or five, or... I don't know. It's all an experiment. Let me know. Image three of four for the video. I really love this portrait. I like the bokeh in the background, the way you use the balcony to draw perspective into your model, as well as the pose. You nailed the pose, so good job on that. First things first, what look and feel do I wanna go for this? It is quite moody and gray outside, so maybe you wanna go for a colder blue look. I also love the orange bush. I don't know if that's bushes or rocks in the background, but I think we're gonna go with a bit of a blue and orange split tone and bring out the moody blue hour vibes that this photo has. So I'm gonna start with bringing down the temperature just a bit, just to give it those blue vibes. I'm also gonna add some highlight split toning of blue. Once again, I've done that in all three photos, but I like to do that quite often. And then I'm gonna bring down the saturation of the blues as well as the luminance, just to make it even more moody. But next up, going to the tone curve, we cannot forget about that. That is like the most important thing. Bringing up the highlights and I'm gonna bring down the shadows quite a bit. Probably don't wanna take the highlights up too much to keep it that moody feel. And then I'm also gonna bring down the fade of the highlights. So bringing down the top end of the tone curve to fade out the highlights. Up next, I'm gonna bring up the shadows. I always like to bring up the shadows to show the detail in the shadows, but you can still keep the darkness of it by bringing the blacks down. So that's just my personal preference and you guys can use the same if you want to, obviously. Gonna bring down the highlights and then take up the whites just a little bit, not too much, but that looks good over there. Up next, I'm gonna bring a graduated filter over the bottom over here just to add some focus to the model's face. We can also do that on the sky and even the right and the left of the photo. That is looking all good. Lastly, I'm just gonna bring up the saturation of the red just to brighten up her skin a little bit and also lighten it just a little bit as well, bringing up that luminance. I'm over to grain. Once again, I love the grainy feels. I'm gonna add some going in there giving it super moody vibes and I think we are done with that flicking between the before and after I'm super happy with that that looks quite editorial and could be in a magazine I'm I'm happy with that great job on the picture up next we have this beautiful portrait from Hind Ventures his tag should be on screen right now so definitely go check him out really good portrait photographer I think for this one I'm gonna copy the base settings of the other one we just edited with the greenish blue feel to it so I'm gonna hit the Command C, Control again, hit copy on those settings, and then come over to this portrait. Just paste them down on there. And again, okay. so this image is a JPEG. So straight off the bat, I would highly suggest that you guys submit raw photos if you can, just because it would be way easier for me to edit. The reason being is there's a lot more data in raw photos, so there's a lot more detail in the highlights as well as shadows, so it's a lot easier to play around with the different settings. But as you can see, we just pasted settings from a raw photo onto a JPEG, and it looks a bit too harsh. So I'm just gonna adjust this real quick, just bringing down the whites just because it was a bit too much so I'm gonna bring the whites up to around 40 bringing the highlights and uh, we'll leave the highlights over there I'm gonna bring up the shadows quite a bit because I really like the detail of the plant surrounding the model and then I'm gonna come play around with the colors quite a bit I'm gonna bring the screen saturation all the way down finally I'm just gonna bring down the saturation of the orange just a little bit because I feel that her skin is just a bit too saturated. And then following that, there's not much more to do to this image besides some detailed work. So I'm gonna come over to the brush tool. I really wanna brighten up the plants around her. I do love the detail, as I said, but if I brighten up the shadows of the whole image, it's gonna bring up the shadows in her face and her hair as well. So I'm just going with the brush all along the edges of the plants. If you wanna see what you're brushing out, um, you can hit O on your keyboard and I'll show this red masking tool just so you can see where to brush exactly. I'm not going to be too intricate with it right now. I just want to get it done super quickly. 
and then bring up the shadows of that maybe bring up the exposure just a bit that's looking good blacks down so the last thing i want to do to this photo is change the purple flowers to blue we can see that her skin tone is obviously orange so i want to complement that with some blue flowers i just love having blue in my shots so i'm going to come over to the purple color bring the hue all the way into the blues over here we can see that that is a bit overpowering for right now so i'm just going to bring down that saturation and make it look a bit more natural and that looks good to me one more last 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 thing just gonna brighten up the eyes a little bit not too much gonna come over to the brush tool over here just paint around the iris on both of the eyes and then just bring up that exposure not too much and then also just gonna bring up the saturation of that just a little bit shadows up and there we go cool we are done with the photo. So final thoughts on the photo, did I make it better? Did I make it worse? Let me know in the comments down below. Obviously there are so many different things that you can do with every single photo. I could make the plants more green. I could do a billion different things. I'm just trying to spice it up for each photo that we do in the series. So let me know, leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Also let me know what you thought of this episode, the idea, the structure, what can I do to make it better? Just let me know all of the everythings down in the comments below. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for sticking with me on this journey through YouTube and through life. I, I really appreciate it. And I'm so excited to be finished with the university and to really focus on doing this kind of stuff as often as I can. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Send in your raw photos to thevisualreviews at gmail.com and I'll get on to making more episodes like this whenever I get a chance. But as of right now, remember to stay weird, don't die, and make it happen. I'll see you guys in the next one.